Good morning, everybody. Let me just do a quick mic check here. Give me one second. All right, let's just check. All right, sounds like we're good. All right, good to go. All right, let me see, let me see. All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, let me just make sure my computer is good. Computer looks good. Bam, bam. All right, all right. Happy Saturday, everybody. We are officially halfway into the year. Okay. Um, finally made it. Um, officially now situated here in San Diego. Okay, so from the beginning of the year, so uh, right after New Year's started, okay, to up to now, so the half of the year, I've pretty much been everywhere, all right? Uh, East Coast, Midwest, moving, okay? It's one thing moving from, moving like from one city to another, but when you're moving from one state, okay, all the way to California or like Illinois, all the way to California, all right, a lot, a lot of, stuff can happen some stuff that i wasn't expecting you know uh last minute stuff just kind of happens and we kind of gotta adjust okay but i could i could easily say now that we are probably uh 90 percent packed up or packed in uh, or unpacked and ready to go all right uh we've already started production on some jobs all right, so machines made it good. So I did post a picture how, how we put it in the crates. Okay, I always save the crates because me being in the Navy, all right, moving is just part of the job. Um, that was my third move with equipment. All right, so they made it. First thing we did, uh, we ran a tension test. We pretty much made sure everything was running good. Nothing kind of because sometimes the machines, when they're kind of rattling, you know, some of the screws could start getting loose. But they actually held on pretty tight. OK, we made sure that everything was uh, zip tied. All right. To the crate. Everything was real strong. All right. So we made it. Uh, I'm here. I did want to get a uh, a wide view angle. Okay, of this is this is like the production space that I have. I still have to kind of decorate it. All right, so I'll make a video where I kind of do a tour. But I have computers, and then here I got camera two. Let me see if I got bam right here, right next to me. So this is right to my left, right here. Bam, right here. Look at that. All right, I think it's very useful having the whiteboard. All right. I just got to kind of put a little bit more lights on this, but for the most part, you could kind of see it. Hold on. Let me see. Because I don't know about you. Uh, I'm kind of like old school. I like to see things on, on the board. All right. So here I'm planning to shoot some videos where. All right. Happy Saturday. And then here, right next to it, this part here, okay, this is kind of what my embroidery, like the way I teach embroidery, is going to come down to these 10 steps, all right? I know we started the year, I think the first video that we had, I think the first video that we had was the 10-point checklist of digitizing. All right, I did kind of revised it, okay? I made like a slight, a slight little change where number one is receiving the design, all right? Receiving the design, sequence, uh, tracing each object, stitch length, density, stitch angles, underlay, pull comp, start, stop, tie-ins, tie-outs, trims, jumps, all right? So today, when we're digitizing, I'm going to make sure I'm hitting all my, 
my little steps, my check boxes here. Okay, we're we're literally going to go through every checklist here. Okay, you could do it per object or you know at the very end, right? But right now, even if you're like brand new to embroidery, this might not make sense. All right, but the more you see it, and the more I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of show you where we're at in the 10 point checklist, all right? So I am planning to go back to do some of the videos using the whiteboard, all right? So we got that one here. All right, let me see. Um, give me one sec. Bam, right here. All right, cool, cool. So slowly but surely, I'm setting up the, I'm setting up this space. Uh, this space is gonna be, kind of like my digitizing space. I have my cameras, all right? I, I pretty much have all my camera racks all lined up and they're permanently there so I don't have to move them, okay? So let's say one, one morning I wake up motivated uh, and I wanna go live or I'm excited that I learned something. I learned something on a test, test stitch. Um, I could easily go live instantly, all right? So very good. Uh, I'm slowly but surely getting all my lights and everything situated. I got the board ready right there. All right. Um, three tables. All right. So right in front, I got this main desk here and two tables on the side just to kind of show production. All right. Um, good thing right now. All right. The good thing right now is that I am officially on vacation right now. So I have 30 days. All right, I have 30 days to make a lot of things that I have planned, that I have in my notebook, that I have in my brain, uh, just ideas that I've had pretty much driving cross country, okay? When you're driving cross country, you're just kind of, your brain is just kind of thinking of all crazy ideas, right? So a lot of stuff I've written down and I'm excited to uh, make videos on a lot of these uh, ideas that I have, okay? So during these 30 days, I'm going to go all out, okay, all out. It's only going to be uh, digitizing production family, right? That's the only three things that's going to be on my mind for the next 30 days. So make sure you uh, stay tuned because uh, the videos are going to be dropping real, real quick. All right. All right. Let me say good morning to our guest today. Good morning, Kingsbury. Jesse in the house. Uh, TMG, good morning. Barb, North Central Minnesota. Good morning. All right, all right. Who else? Eugene. Hola to everybody. Two and or four. Naomi, hello. Good morning. All right. Super Threads in the house or Supreme Threads in the house. Nelson, buenos dias. Aldell, good morning. All right, so we are ready to go. Uh, so driving into San Diego, all right, uh, going to the store, first thing I saw, uh, uh, I'm kind of close to uh, UC San Diego. So this, this logo pretty much stood out, okay? And the reason why I want to use this logo today for training, because there's I think there's a lot of lessons learned that we could use from this. All right, I like the template. When I when I see logos like this, I'm thinking template. All right. Uh, and we could use a lot of this template for other work, okay? So like if you delete, if we minus the design in the middle, okay? You could put your own text in there and make it, you know, there, it's like a common template that you'll see a lot of designs with, all right? So that's kind of like what I want to talk to you what I want to talk uh, in today's episode, all right? And then one last thing, all right? Let me just give one some announcements real quick. And then Nelson, hablas español? Yes, si, sí, si sí, hablo español. All right, morning, MM Customs, says Tom. All right, all right. All right, so quick announcements. Uh, this, uh, if you're a channel member, so we have a channel member for YouTube members here. 
uh, nineteen ninety nine a month. Uh, the sh uh, the morning shows, I put the files there available for free download. So if you are a member, you could download it and you could follow along as we're digitizing. All right. Um, and for this month, definitely working on new files. So look out for that. All right. Um, I do have. I'll, I'll, I'll actually list it. I'll post a list later, but one of the big questions that I get week in, week out is just what what um, consumables we use at our shops. OK, I do post a Amazon link in our. Um, pretty much in every video. All right, I, got, I still have to do it on this video, so if you're watching it right now, uh, just wait till after the show and I'll post a link. But one thing about our Amazon shop, anything I post on that link is stuff that we actually use and we have in our shop. So I'm not going to post anything that I've never used or I have no idea what it is or I think it's good. OK, so everything there from the needles, um, needles, just scissors. Uh, I don't buy backing from Amazon, so uh, I don't have any backing on my Amazon link. I use uh, all stitch. Uh, for backing or United Threads for backing. Um, okay, but anytime you have a question like, hey, let me see what, what he uses, like what bobbins he uses. All right, you can find them there or you could also find them on All Stitch also. All right, just FYI. All right. Um, if you sent me a message like within the past month, okay, I am super backed up just with messages. Uh, I am going back checking emails. Okay, uh, two ways you could you could send me an email. One is through our website RomeroThreads.com. We do have a, uh, a questionnaire form or a question form, uh, or uh, we have our email linked on the YouTube also. Uh, the number four and my name Ever Romero at Gmail. Okay, so if you do have questions, and then last last uh, announcement, if you are a channel member. OK, I am bringing back office hours and where I'll set up uh, two or three hours. Like a window, two or three hours um, for 10 minute phone calls. All right. I have a phone uh, designated just for that purpose only, just to take calls um, for any channel member. If you want to talk anything about embroidery, it doesn't matter what it is. OK, I don't have the answers for any for everything. But I might kind of have a uh, suggestions or I probably have gone through any situation that you're probably going through. All right. Or if you want a, a second eye on a certain project. OK, I am doing office hours um, next week will be Tuesdays and Thursdays. So if you're a channel member, I'm going to put that announcement on the channel member forum. OK, uh, that's on YouTube. OK, that's that's all within YouTube. All right. Um, all right, so that is, uh, if you have any questions for today, okay, uh, just drop a cue right in front of your question. Okay, we're going to get into, uh, we're going to kind of dive deep today. Okay, very good information today. Um, the thing with embroidery, okay, even though digitizing, you don't have to know digitizing. Okay, it's not like it's mandatory, you have to know it expert level in order to do embroidery okay you can easily send it out okay you can easily send out your designs to a digitizer but sometimes you have to do minor tweaks especially when you're working with details okay here we're, we're you're gonna see we're kind of like in the pretty detailed arena all right so sometimes you have to know some of the basic stuff to at least uh fix minor issues all right all right, let's get started today. All right. Bam, bam. Bam, bam, bam. All right, let me see. All right, so here I have the grids off right here. All right, so uh, first thing we want to do, okay, uh, design. So if we're looking at the 10 point checklist, let's see if I put the 10. All right. 10 point checklist, receive design. Okay, so when a customer sends you a design, right, you're gonna you're gonna receive it all sorts of ways, all different ways. Um, usually a JPEG, 
right? If you tell them, hey, send me a JPEG, that should be good. As, as long as it's good resolution, you should be fine. All right. Um, what we want to see, let me unlock this. What we want to know, important questions, is how big is my design? So here, let's put it on US, 2.55, okay? 2.55, pretty much 2.5 uh, inches, all right? Which is pretty common. Right. That's like my sweet spot, the sweet spot that I like to work with because it's perfect for polos and hats. All right. Now we can lock this down. So that's good right here. OK, we could. Actually, let me take out the grids so it's easier to see. All right. What I want to know, we're still on the design phase. I'm analyzing the design. What we want to do, we want to measure how big is this font right here? All right, let's go metric. All right, so you could see my ruler showing me right here. All right, we're definitely below five millimeters. All right, we're at about four, four millimeters. All right, so we're like in the deep end right here, right? Because anything lower than five millimeters is uh, considered small text. Or very small text. Five millimeters is small text. Like five through eight maybe might be considered small text. All right. So we're in the small text category. All right. Um, my, my lines here, we're looking at about a little less or probably close to one millimeter. All right. So real thin. At one millimeter, you're you're not gonna see the you're not gonna see this too. It's not gonna be so visible. Okay, it'll be there, but it won't be so visible. All right, and then here, bang, six point two four. All right, cool. All right, and then here you can see these little lines were less than uh, one millimeters, and then this text. Right, if we want to do this text, two millimeters. So you are like super, super deep end small text right here. This is as small. I mean, you could get smaller, but this is as small as you really, really, really want to get. All right. If you're going like Samwise, 0.54. All right. Exp extremely small text. All right. First thing I want to I want to talk about. So if we're looking at our checklist right here number two on the checklist sequence okay sequence of the entire design so sequence what sequence is is in what order do you want to stitch this out okay now you could digitize it in any order and then at the very end organize it but you should already have a uh, kind of like an idea of what do you want to stitch or yeah what do you want to stitch first all right so usually there's sometimes sometimes there's a right answer sometimes there's a debatable answer and sometimes it's just all opinion okay so sometimes there's not a right answer and sometimes there is okay uh, what you want to do so the main thing here is you want to avoid any puckering. You want to avoid overlaps or gaps. Okay, so that's kind of things to consider when you're when you're thinking about your sequence. Okay, so here, right, the safe route would be let me do this white first, right? Because you're doing the center, so we could do center out, right? Do the white first, then the blue second, and then we can do these lines and then the text last all right so let's go ahead and for today's uh today's digitizing even though i'm using wilcom i'm using very basic tools all right i'm not using anything crazy here all right right here what i just used is the digitized closed shape okay um Let's put back these grids. And actually, I'm going to do a uh, just a run stitch 
And you're going to see with this run stitch, I could convert. Um, I can convert this run stitch into my fill stitch. So here you're seeing where I'm clicking is right at the zero points. Okay, so here in the middle. Okay, right. Up, this is my zero y axis. And then I'm going to click down here to my zero x axis. All right. All right, all I did was a, a circle right here. All right. And I just used four points. So if you look at it, uh, H, one here, two, three, four. All right. So it takes four points to make a, a circle right here. All right. Right now, it's just a full circle right now. And I have the ability, I can turn this into a sand stitch. Okay. I can turn this into a fill stitch. All right. Now, this is where our settings, okay, so our checklist starts coming in right now. So I want this to be a fill stitch. All right. Now, looking at our checklist, all right. Uh, we traced it. So we just traced it. That was number three trace each object. Now we're looking at stitch length, density, stitch angles. Okay, so let's try those three first. Those are my three settings now. Okay. And the more you uh, the more you digitize and practice, the quicker you're going to go through these steps. All right, right now we're taking like baby steps. Okay, we could go a 15 degree here. Every object has a start stop. Okay, so this green means where do you want to start? This red means where do you want to stop? Okay. Bam. And then my length. So if I'm looking at my length here at object properties, my length for millimeters, that's pretty much standard here. Spacing 40. So this is like your standard here, 40.4 and uh, your spacing, which is your density 0.4 and your length 4, okay? Um, you could change it, okay? The more you work with fill stitches, the more you'll see uh, situations where you should change it. Here, I'll just leave it the way it is, all right? And then my next one on the list is uh, underlay, okay? Underlay, we'll do underlay and pull comp now. All right, so underlay is my base what do i want as my base underneath underneath my stitches what do i want so my go-to i want a tatami running at a 90 degree so it's opposite of what it's running right so and then i'll show you here and then the edge run all right and then pull comp i'm just going to keep it the way it is right now okay pull comp and the reason why I'm going to keep it the way, because I'm not too worried about overlap, because I have, I'm going to have a satin stitch between the blue and the white. Okay, between the blue and the white, I have a gold sand stitch running in between. Okay, so if I have a little minor gaps, that's fine, because my sand stitch is going to go there. Um, also, I could manually make overlaps, okay? So what I mean from there, let's say I wanna go over into a little bit of the blue, I could just pull it here, okay? So I, that's a manual uh, manual pull compensation, all right? If you wanted to pull it out with the, with the object properties, you could probably put like a four or five, okay? I'm gonna kinda exaggerate a bit. Well, it kinda went out a bit, all right? Actually, let's go seven. All right, you could you could do a pull comp like that, or you could just physically pull your design. All right, and it would only do this node here if you want to do everything. You would kind of or the section that you want, you would just pull it like that. All right, for right now, I'm just gonna keep it that way. Bam, ten. All right. What's next on my uh, checklist? 
uh, pull comp start stop. So I, I took care of the start stop in the beginning. Where do you want to start? Where do you want to stop? Tie ins, tie outs. You're going to see that a lot right now when I'm doing the text. Okay. Because I'm going to um, manually digitize the text. I'm not going to use a keyboard. I'm not going to use the keyboard text. I'm going to manually digitize the text. And that's where tie ins, tie outs. It's not a big deal right here. It's just going to do it since it's only one object. Uh, we definitely need a tie-in, tie-out. Tie-ins, tie-outs, that helps so your thread won't unravel, okay? So it won't get loose in the beginning or the end, okay? So now if, if I replay this, okay, let me slow it down a bit. All right, oops, sorry about that. All right. I have to go to the screen. All right. Let's take out the picture. All right, let's do a replay of what we just did, all right? And then from here on out, we can move a little faster. I just wanted to show you this one so the checklist could start making sense. All right, so I wanted to start on the bottom. So it starts on the bottom. This here, it's going to do the underlay at a 90 degree. Okay, so you're going to see how it's going to so 90 degree is perpendicular to my final stitch. Okay, so it did it did uh, the tatami. This is your tatami underlay, and now it's gonna do the the edge run. Okay, so it does the edge run now? Bam! That's it. Just finished my underlay now. Okay, so it did that last edge run? So what this does? It builds the base. Okay. Uh, it also helps sometimes if you don't use if you don't use underlay or the correct amount of underlay, you're gonna get an egg as a, as your circle. Okay, so this helps so your circle doesn't turn into an egg, right? Where you're getting a pool from certain areas. So this one kind of locks in that foundation, and then it keeps the shape. Okay, so if your if your file if you see that your file is turning into like different shapes than it's supposed to. Most likely you you need um, either underlay or more underlay, okay? Uh, this one here I stitched out on twill. So twill, pretty strong fabric, okay? If if I was doing something more stretchy, I probably, I probably need a little bit more underlay. But for right now, we're good here. Now it's gonna start the actual stitch. All right, so you see how it's running perpendicular, 90 degrees to that underlay, okay? That's just so it could uh, build the foundation, all right? Same way like houses are built, right? The joist uh, is usually running perpendicular, okay? And then you put like the, the flooring on top of it. Okay, so it looks like that. Bam. All right, now we have a nice smooth location there. Now, what you could also do, we could, um, well, we'll do that at the end where I'm duplicated. I could duplicate this, turn this into a sand stitch, all right, where you could have your, your first stitch right there, okay, and then turn this into a two millimeter. Okay, you could go one millimeter, all right, just like the drawing, but sometimes you have to kind of deviate from the actual drawings. Okay, if you want to keep it at at one millimeter, okay. So so far, let's turn this white. All right, so far we're here. Okay, so far we're here. All right, now let's do this blue one. All right, many different ways to do this blue. All right, what I'm gonna do, let me hide this yellow one. Hide, all right, let me see if we got any questions here. I think we're good. All right, good morning, Jim, from the OC. All right, just a little north from here, Placentia, California. All right, good morning, it's out of focus. All right.
Uh, let me know if, yeah, let me know if we're out of, if, if it does go out of focus, that just means my internet. So let me know. I have my internet right next to me. So hopefully it's doing good. It's holding strong. So let me know if, it, if it's going off. All right. Um, Naomi, I moved from coast to coast twice as well as moving to several different states. And it's always nerve. Oh, my goodness. It is super nerve wracking. All right. Yep. Right here. All right. Yeah, it's just so much. You got to change it. Like things that you don't think about, you have to change everything. Like, all right. Um, all right. We're doing good. All right. Welcome, Sammy's mom from Arizona. Debbie White, good morning. New, from New York. All right, right. Good morning, Edgar. J Love, good morning. All right, we're looking good right now. Let's continue. Okay, right now we're doing like the, the outer fill stitches and then we'll get into the text. All right, let's do this inner, this outer blue. All right. Let me dim this up a bit. Bam. Could dim that. And let's do the same thing. We're going to do a uh, digitized close shape. All right. Uh, what you can do also. Okay. This is all. Hold on. Let me go to my screen real quick because this is kind of important right here. All right. Sometimes you have to adjust the picture. Okay. Sometimes you cannot digitize a file exactly like the actual picture. Sometimes you have to, you know, change it a bit. All right. Now, is somebody going to notice that if you change the picture, if it's uh, 0.2 millimeters and you changed it to 0.6 millimeters? All right. Maybe, maybe not. All right. But for the most part, every now and then, you're going to have to tweak the design a bit. So it could fit for embroidery. So the design could fit for embroidery. Sometimes you got to completely redo the graphics. All right. So knowing the rules, knowing when to break the rules, okay, knowing when you can't, you have no other choice, but you cannot break the rules. You got to change the design. Okay. Um, that comes with experience and knowing um, the do's and don'ts of embroidery. All right. All right. Let's go back here. Now, with that being said, we can easily we can easily um, digitize it according to the picture. But if I want to, if I were to digitize this exactly like the picture, we might lose some of this spacing, okay? This blue spacing between my letters. All right, and I'll show you. I actually have the I I have. I have the stitch outs here where I'm going to show that. Okay. I'm going to show a file where the letters are very close to the, to the outside sand stitches. Okay. It is just a preference. All right. So let me just show you here. So if that's the case, sometimes, um, let's digitize close shape. Sometimes, let's make a circle real quick. So I'm gonna go hit the zero. So you see how it's at the zero mark, at the zero X mark, and then or the zero Y mark, and then zero here. Go over here. Zero. Okay, I'm just doing my four clicks for a circle. All right. So what you can do, you what I'm making right now is the blue, the blue uh, uh, outer. So let's turn that into, select that. Remember, I could turn this into either a sand stitch or I wanted a fill stitch. Okay. So we're doing the blue right now. Bam. Uh, so here you have the choice. If you wanted to make more space, more blue space, let's say you didn't have enough space or your text was going to get too too congested okay you could pull it out well let me see everything so make sure you can pull this out a bit holding shift all right 
so it kind of opens up a bit all right i'm not going to do that right now i think i'm good right now but i'm going you can notice that i went all the way to the edge of the of the yellow i didn't stop here at the blue so i made it a tad bit bigger and here i'm going to make it a tad bit bigger now of course it would be illogical unnecessary to stitch out this whole blue right let me hide this it would be unnecessary to do all this blue well since it's on top you wouldn't be able to okay i don't so we're gonna have to cut this up all right so what i do select that blue and i'm gonna go here to add holes all right i know pretty much a lot of digitizing software has that function to add a hole so we're going to add a hole here let's go let me hide this yellow so same thing i'm going to create that circle looking for that zero mark all right zero bam click here oops I didn't like that. Okay, hold on. Let's try that again. Uh, add holes. Bam, right there. All right. So same thing, going down this down here on the bottom. And what I'm doing, I'm adding a hole to that blue. All right. Then let's go zero. And then. Do another click here, looking for that zero, bam. All right now, let's hide this white. Oh, hold on. All right, I didn't like that. Bam, bam. All right, let's try it again. Let's cut that. Uh, make hole, add holes. Zero, zero, bam. All right, there we go. It was, I was supposed to do two, uh, hit enter twice. I only hit enter once, that's why it didn't do it. All right, so we got our hole. All right, we have a hole and unhide all. All right, so the, the white goes right here. Let's hide this. All right, let's see this overlap. Okay, I have a sand stitch in between. So I'm not too concerned of uh, a mini gap here. Bam, bam. All right, so it looks like this right now. And then what I want to show you is, bam, let's unhide this, unhide. Let's turn this into a, turn this red, okay? And I'm going to show you this one, my blue, I'm going to duplicate it. Okay, so I have two, but I'm going to turn it into a run stitch and turn it red. And what that does, it gives me running stitches here. All right, so actually I could delete this one. All right, so with these two running stitches, I could turn these into my sand stitches. All right, now, if I do it in this order, let's go white first. So it's gonna do the white first, blue, inner, that this inner red, and then this outer red for right now, okay? So this outer red, this is my true circle right here. All right, so by the time I stitch out this last one, it'll tell me if my design actually stayed in a perfect circle, okay? If if my, if my blue were to turn a little eggy, okay, which, you know, pretty sure a lot of you seen designs where your circles turn into an egg, all right? This red would let me know if it turned into an egg, all right? Now, I've already stitched this one out to show you an example. All right, so let me show you. Let's go. 
let's go here. All right, because for those who follow this channel, you already know that um, I like actual sew outs. All right, that's how we we really learn. All right, so I'm right here. Let me see. Bam. Got this file right here. All right, it's not too, not too bright, but bam, right there. All right, this is what we have right here. All right, so I changed it to a to a a neon orange, so it's visible, so you can see. Okay, this is our stitch out. I actually have the red on the outside. See, let me get a perfect angle right here. All right, you can see that little mini gap right there. Okay, that's because I didn't put for any uh, compensation, any pool compensation, or any overlap. Okay, so I meant to do that. I wanted to do that because I actually have a red thread running in inside the middle. All right. It's running perfectly in that gap, okay? You can't really see it. I don't I don't know if you can see it too good there at that angle. But I have a red thread, okay, going in between. And that's telling me if any of my circles are turning into any odd shapes, okay? But everything lines up, all right? If that's the case, I can easily turn those run stitches into satin stitches. All right, let me see. I'll show you here so you can see that. But what I'm focused here is on those red threads on the outside the white and outside the, the yellow, okay? Because that's my true circle there. All right. Let's come back here. All right, so this is what we just looked at right here. Okay. Now, what I'm looking for, I'm making sure this blue H doesn't look like this. Okay, because there's times if we don't have the proper underlay where some of your circles, okay, and and a lot of that happens with stretchier fabrics, okay? So if you see where you're, uh, if you're if you're stitching on a stretchy fabric and you're getting a shape that's looked like an egg, so now you have to compensate. And when you digitize it, you might have to bring it down a bit. So it might have to look like this, okay? If you're getting that egg effect, okay? Which I'm not here, okay? So I'm good. So let's bring it back. So now, Okay, now I can turn these stitches, let's turn them yellow now, into sand stitches. Bam. All right, and right now it's at a three. Let's make it a little smaller. Okay, two. All right, I know it's running down the middle perfectly, so I don't have to adjust any of my, uh, my offset. Okay, and this is what I mean of offset. If you ever have to offset your lines, you do it um, here within percentages. So let's say you want to go up, you want to push it up 100%. It'll follow that line. So it'll follow that line there. And vice versa, if I were to offset it at a zero, it'll bring it in. Okay. And there are situations where you gotta adjust the offset. For this one, it's running down the middle perfect. So I don't have to adjust that offset there. Okay. And let's go. So now let's go into my, um, let's go into my settings here on the blue one, it's Tommy, edge run, that's fine. And here on the circles, actually H, I need to adjust my start stops. So here, since I went 15 degrees on the on the white, I kind of want to go the opposite on my blue. Okay, that's just kind of like a habit that I have. Okay, um, I want to start here. 
and here. All right. Like I said, there's no right or wrong answer, like of the angles that you use. Some people like to use zero degrees. All right. But I got it here at 15 degrees and then 165 for my blue. All right. And, and then uh, underlay for my sand stitches, center run. And then for my outer one, I'll put a uh, zigzag. Bam. All right. Cool. So that's that. All right. So we have our template. Okay. Template. This one here. So templates. Um, that's kind of what I'm going to focus on a bit this month too, is templates. Just having templates ready. So if you ever want to do a patch or a badge uh, for a half or a polo. Okay. This one would be ready to go, okay? You would just have to type in whatever uh, information you want in the middle and on the outsides, okay? So it's always good to keep templates because you never know. Uh, a lot of times badges, they, ha they have like the same template style, okay? All right, let's hide this. Let's hide these letters. And let's get into the text. Let's hide this too. Well, actually, let's keep it so we're not distracted with the design inside. All right. Um, all right. Good morning, Sadar. All right. William, good morning. All right, all right. I think we're doing good with questions all right now so we did the easy part all right i kind of went in slow motion with the easy part is just the foundation of our uh, design okay now comes the actual uh this is the detailed portion of it okay let's see if i got you guys all right all right, now we're getting into the detail portion of here. All right, now we're getting into the text. Okay, uh, really, I think text. All right, text. If you, it's very straightforward as long as we're following the basic rules. Okay, uh, once we get into small text, you don't. You really want to stay away from any unnecessary stitching okay so when i'm talking about unnecessary stitching unnecessary underlay unnecessary jumps and unnecessary uh tie-ins tie-offs okay everything is magnified when we're talking about small stitches you make one little mistake it shows up okay sometimes you have no other choice but to have a, a small defect in your design for example if tie-ins tie-outs there's times where you have no other choice but you have to put in a tie in tie out you're going to get that little small knot on that letter okay you can't just take away a tie in or the final tie off okay but you got to know where to put them sometimes all right sometimes you have to you have to be very strategic on where to put your your starts and your stops and when to remove them okay because the software, a lot of times, it's going to automatically put in tie-in, tie-offs according to your settings. So there's times where you have to override settings and take them off, okay? But you got to make sure you're doing it. Uh, you got to make sure you're doing it all in step because if you take it off in a situation where you weren't supposed to, things could happen, all right? All right. Um, so let's go into here, all right? Um, all right, so my plan right now, so if we're talking about sequencing, so we go back to our, uh, we go back to our checklist, okay, sequencing, where do we want to start? All right, uh, usually we would want to start with University of California, right? But of course, we want to kind of start in the middle, all right, we want to start in the middle, um, there's always the start from the middle and work your way out. Sometimes it's necessary. Sometimes it doesn't have to be like that, all right? 
But for right now, I'm going to go from of. I'm going to digitize the word of first. California. Then university. No, of California, San Diego, then finalize it with university. All right. Is that the right answer? There, there, you could do it other ways. Okay. You could easily do it other ways. That's the way I'm going to do it now. All right. You could have done San Diego first and then work your way up. All right. But for right now, I'm just doing straight flat on twill. So that's fine. Okay. Um, all right. So we're at small text. So once again, when I measure this, okay, we're at about four and a half. All right. I definitely don't want to use unnecessary underlay. So let's say underlay. We could just keep it at center run. Okay. Uh, now here is where your settings, you have to be familiar with settings. Okay. You have to know what every, what each one of these um, settings is on your underlay. Okay. Even on your, um, even here, density. Okay. We can open it up a bit. Okay. We're getting small lettering. We could stay probably at 0.4. Underlay, bam, bam. Length 2.2 .2 is our, you could, you could keep it at 2.2. .2. You could bring it down all the way to, I would say, like 1.8. Sometimes I just keep it at a 2, all right? And I'm going to tell you what these numbers mean right now, okay? Minimum length, okay? You can bring this a tad bit, keep it down right here for right now, all right? But let me just tell you what, what, what I did right now, all right, just in case. So, so you want to know where you want to start, stop, or have an idea where to start, stop? Um, so we won't have any cuts in between letters. What I like to do, I like to keep the letters without cuts. I'll make a cut after the word. All right. So of, make that all one with no cuts in between. Cut and then go to California. Do all of California with no cuts. Okay. Then go to San. Do San with no cuts. Cut, then do Diego. All right, so I'll go bam. Okay, so right now I'm just using the regular uh, column A. Okay, pretty much everybody, if you have digitizing software, you have a column A. All right, where you're doing one side, other side, next side. All right, bam. And then you can see how wide my thing is going, so 0.78. All right. So now let's dissect and you're going to see all the settings that I just made. Okay. You're going to see all the settings that I just made. This line in between, that's my underlay right there. So if I were to play this, let's put this on top. Let's replay this letter real quick. All right. Hold on. Let's slow that down a bit. All right, so right here it's doing the underlay. Now it's gonna go back, start where, and then end here. All right, let's analyze this part right here. All right, so these here, H, has a double um, or M. Point eight. So it doesn't want to go smaller than point eight. Okay, which is not my underlay. See right here. Stay at 0.8 right here. Doesn't want to go any smaller. That's because I told it to not go minimum length 0.8. Okay, this is a curve. This is a curve uh, letter. So it probably won't hit 
two millimeters. Okay, but what you're gonna see once we get to like the the straight letters, it'll hit the two millimeters. Okay, so by us telling it don't go greater than or less than 0.8, you could bring it down to 0.7. If you see that your underlay is kind of sticking out, okay. Sometimes when you have uh, choppy letters, a lot of time is your underlay that's showing underneath. Okay, this is the minimum length. Okay, 0.7. Okay, you're probably still good. All right, but for right now, I'll keep it there. Bam, bam. All right, but the standard, remember the standard had us at a at a 2.5, all right? So, I mean, it's it'll still work at a 2.5. All right, bam. All right, this is where all your checklist is coming into hand. For something like this, where now we're going from object to object. So from here, oh, one last thing, my push pull. So let's measure our thread. So right now, if we're looking at our pull comp, 0.17, okay, we're getting 0.17 on each side extra. So that's what's giving us here, bam, 0.17 millimeters extra. All right, so when we measure from side to side, okay, 1.1 is our sad stitch. All right. Sometimes you should be all right, 1.1, but you could actually go a little bit if you want to be at 1.5. Okay. 1.5 is like the safe size. Let me show you what 1.5 is. Bam, right here. That's 1.5. All right. Sand stitches, they're very happy at 1.5. You could go a little lower, but if you really want to get nice, crisp lettering, if, uh, and sand stitches are very happy at 1.5. We can adjust that with our pull comp. So if we're at 0.75, this is how I do it. If we're up about 0.75 here, okay, we need about another 0.75 to be at 1.5. So if I select this and I put it at, let's say, 3.7. Oops. Point three seven. Bam. All right. Now let's measure this. And sometimes on the screen it might look a little weird. Okay. We're about one point five. All right. So we're there. And sometimes on the screen it might like it might look bulky, but by the time you stitch it out, okay, you'll see that it kind of fits pretty good. All right. So these are all options. It's not like you have to do it, but sometimes it's good to add pool comp, okay? And so I'm here. We want to know on the object, where do we start? Where do we end? We ended here, all right? So now we could do the F, all right? If I want to do this F, I know I want to walk up to here. Make it green just so you could see it. All right, then. So when I'm when I'm at this size, it's like everything is calculated. All right, I'll adjust the settings right now. I like a different color. All right, green, and then pull comb three seven. Um, underlay, bam, bam, to a. All right, now I'm kind of focused on this lettering because once you got, once you kind of got an idea, you could use this information for your rest of your text. All right, um, so here I select my O outline connectors. And I don't want to cut when I when I when I go from my O to my F. I don't want to have any cut. So I push trim after off. Okay, that's gonna be 
Trim after. Hold on. Oh. Bring it here. All right, there it goes. All right, so you can see this jump stitch right here. All right, because it's going to jump to the next one. It's going to go to this line here and then go there. All right, and then here, H, where do you want to start? So I want to start here, stop here. And then H here, start here where I ended. And then end here, bam. All right, bam. Now let's do a replay on this. All right. All right, so it's doing the underlay. It's going to do the side stitch, go around. Then it's going to jump into the F, do the first bar inside the F, and go out, bam. All right, one thing I want to highlight here is sometimes here, you also want to make sure tie off. We don't need a tie off because we're not cutting this jump stitch right here. Okay, so this tie off, off. Okay, same thing with this line here. When it jumps into this line, it's going to jump in. I don't want to tie in. So that's tie off. I mean, off. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about on the 10 point checklist. When I talk about tie in, tie off, there's two times there's two points where I want to tie in or a tie off in the beginning I want to tie in because that's where you're starting okay so here H this green means I'm starting so I have a tie in here and then at the very end and then you could tell because you'll see this dimple right here so here at the end of the F you'll see that dimple but what you don't want is dimples in between letters because they get highlighted, okay? You can see them. You can see them very good, all right? All right, let's see. We're at one hour right now, all right? Um, and then, okay, this is a good comment. Thank you, Barb, for this comment right here, all right? At this point, I would check to see what alphabets I have in Wilcom. I have a narrow block that may work. Yeah, so there, there are... There are, okay, this is perfect. This kind of transitions to my next part, okay? There are, usually with block fonts, okay, you could you could do block fonts, even if it doesn't match 100%, as long as you're 80% there, you should be all right, okay? You should be all right. Um, sometimes the block fonts look better than some of the narrow fonts that you have. So that's why, You'll see that I had to open up my pool pool compensation to open it up. So it actually turned it into more of a block font. All right. Um, sometimes, okay, you're trying to you're trying to spend uh, like 30, 40 minutes looking for the font. And sometimes you probably could have saved some time by just manually digitizing it. And sometimes when we're talking about um the jump stitches okay sometimes it's easier to program your own location where you want to start where you want to stop uh you could do it on uh keyboard keyboard uh text okay sometimes it's easier just to manually do it okay so there are times where yes use use it and then there's other times where it'll probably save you more time okay here it seems like I'm like breaking it down, you know, piece by piece. But there's eventually you pick up this speed where you're just doing it kind of quick. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you for that, Barb. All right. Shout out to my brother from 818 Van Eyes. All right. All right. Can we cut the connect line between? And F, F finish. Okay, hold on. Let me see this question. Thank you for the question. Sherry, can we cut the connect line between O and F? F finish these. Okay. Good question. So can we, after we're done, can we come in and cut this 
jump stitch here. Okay. This one here, super tiny. All right. This is a one to one here. So the way I'm, I'm zoomed out here, I'm at a one to one. Okay. You probably won't, it's too small. You probably won't get, be able to cut it at that distance. All right. Um, you could probably cut, let's say you were to keep it from F to C. Maybe you could cut it. Okay. But from these letters, they're so close together that you might not see it. All right. And I'll, I'll show you. I have a, I have a stitch out here and I'll point that out. Okay. So very good question. All right. Um, yeah, it would be very, very difficult to, to do that right there. All right. All right. Um, let me see. Uh, so I do have the, the, the final one here. Okay. Let me show you what I, I want to show you a, a slow motion. All right. These are the cuts right here. All right. And then I, I stitched this out right before the, right before the live. I stitched this out. So I'm going to show you how it looks. All right. All right, let's push play on this. And then you here, I'm not going to get into more a lot of the details of this part here. The center design, okay? I, I just put, you could get very, very detailed with the inside of the, of the design, okay? I put a running stitch. I mean, I put a walking stitch, a running stitch in here, okay? So I kept it very simple. But you could see how the text... Okay, I just kept it as a single line. Okay, and then I'll show you the final result, how it looks. But let me show you here. Let's go over some of these. So you could see here where I have the, the C connects to the A, okay, down to the L. All right, since we have a jump stitch here, you want to you wanna minimize or hide these jump stitches so it wouldn't make sense to start the L on the top, all right? Because then you would have your, your top would have that jump stitch, okay? Same thing with the L and the F. I mean, the L, the I, the F. You see how they're all on the bottom? Okay, here, kind of, this is the closest point from the O and the F, okay, to the R. The R to the N to the N I A, and then bam, cut. You could see the dimple here, meaning there's a tie off. All right, this one here, I put it by itself. Okay, I did. I did make one where I where I did not machine cut it. I just jumped it to the next one. Okay, but it was so close together where it doesn't make sense to cut it. All right, it. it it looked cleaner just by the machine cutting it. All right, same thing with Diego here. Bam. D I. So we have you're looking for the closest joint together. And then here at the final end. All right. You see that dimple? Bam. What you don't want, you don't want dimples in between each letters. All right. Because it's already you have no other choice but to put a dimple here. All right, but what you don't want is dimple on each letter, okay? Because with one dimple, it's not very noticeable. But if every letter has a dimple, a tie-in, tie-out, now it starts becoming noticeable. And just remember, every time you have a tie-in, tie-out, the backside of this file, it has those long stitches sticking out. So you don't want to have 30 long stitches hanging out of the design in the back. All right, so you could just maintain it by having minimum here. All right, bam, bam. So let's push play, and then I'll show you the stitch out. All right. All right, so first thing we did is we put that underlay here. We we'll speed it up a tad bit since like we kind of already saw this one here. We saw that outer, bam, it's going to run it. It's going to stop right where we told it to stop. All right. Bam. Stopped right there. Now we're going to start the blue. All right. Same thing. I'm, I'm kind of going fast on this one because I already did the slow motion on this. 
All right, we end there and we got this one ready to go. Now, all right, it's gonna do the rings, okay. This is just a matter of, a manner of um, what do you want it to go first? Do you want the letters to go first or do you want the sand stitches to go first, all right? There's no right or wrong answer here. I just put uh, the sand stitches first. Just in case the text overlaps, it'll just overlap on the, but it didn't. I kind of put some spacing with the blue, with the blue uh, fill stitch. Now we did the outer. Okay, bam, put that zigzag underlay with the center run. All right, let this roll out. All right, cut there. Now, let's go to the text. And the good thing about a lot of this, especially doing your own text, everything is adjustable, okay? If there's something you don't like, okay? Actually, that's the whole main theme of digitizing, especially when you're digitizing your own files. If you have the master files, everything is adjustable. Okay, here I have my cut. It's stopping at every cut to let me know. Okay. When when you stitch it out, you might not like something. There might be something that's bothering you. And if if you have the master file, you can easily go back and fix little minor details. Okay. So here it's going, okay. Um, just the big thing about small text is you don't want to use edge run as a as a uh, underlay, and that's like the big thing. Like anytime you see somebody struggling with um, with small text and it's looking choppy, a lot of times it's it's just. Uh, the underlay. That's... On some of these, you see right there. I didn't have an under. I didn't have a a, a center run underlay, and you kind of notice it, right? You notice it on the actual stitch out. A customer would never notice that, but as a digitizer, when you're analyzing your designs, you might notice little small things. So, um, good practice to keep that center run as an underlay, all right? So right here, see how I don't have an underlay? It's just going straight, okay? I would actually recommend putting an underlay there, all right? So just same thing, you could always go back. Sometimes you wanna test it and see how it looks without it. And then you're like, hey, you know what? I think it's better with, with it. All right, it's all about testing. Bam, it's gonna cut there. I was going to go to Diego. All right, let's speed it up a tad bit. But the main thing I wanted to highlight was uh, going from one letter to the next, okay? And avoiding dimples, which are your tie-ins, tie-outs, when, when they're not necessary, okay? Because they are necessary, but if you're not going to cut stitches, then they're not necessary. So here you, you could see I have that. Tie off. Now it does the final one. Okay, bam. Gonna, I'm looking for the closest joint, okay? Software does do uh, the closest joint, but you could also manually do your closest joints together. All right, bam. Speed it up a bit. All right. All right, bam, all right. Oh, I forgot to show the last part. Hold on, let's bring it to the... Hold on. I want to show you the center the part of the design. Right. So this part, the middle part, I just put a run, uh, a run stitch. 
All right, and then we'll see how. You could go. You could go super detailed with the middle part. Okay. Kept it very basic, just with a run stitch. Right. And then I put it black so we could uh, uh, contrast color so we could. All right. So this was all one one stitch. I didn't I didn't use the the branching or anything. All right. And then the text down and let there be light. All right, cool. All right, all right. Bam. So before I show you the final stitch out, all right, let me just. All right, bam. Then Jerry, if it can't show up in some design, does it allow to cut and won't damage the embroidery? So you could cut, you could cut these stitches, okay? So good question here, right? We could, we could tell the machine to cut this. So let's go to this eye. If I go to connectors, trim after, I have it off right now, okay? But I could tell it, hey, if next connector smaller than two, all right? Actually, it's probably, mm, Oh, wrong one. Yeah, trim, trim after. Uh, if next connector, trim after. Okay. H. Oh. Just gotta make it. All right, right here. If I were to cut it here, what we would have to introduce a tie-in. Okay, bam or tie off, okay, tie off. If next connector, bam, all right. So if you are cutting in between letters, you're gonna introduce these tie offs, okay? So now you're gonna have little bumps in your text, okay? So that's the drawback. So you could cut, there's two drawbacks. There, there's a tie in, tie off. So you're gonna have knots in between your letters small okay we're talking about very tiny minute so these little knots are very visible now and then you're going to have a lot you would have a lot of thread long threads hanging on the back side of your design all right all right and pros and cons right for everything i think you're going to see right now some of the the jump the jump stitches are so small you can barely see it okay um, all right, good, good. And then, this, yeah, and then Barb. Uh, yeah, so the main thing here, using this as a template, okay, the information, and then just plug in your, your text and see how it comes out, all right? Test it out, see what changes. If there's something you don't like, all right, just kind of think about everything has a pro and a con, all right? So kind of see what, What's the sweet spot for everybody's uh, lettering and sizing? So a lot of times the, the size and the type of lettering dictates, all right, what's going to happen. All right, let me go ahead and let me, sh let me pull up the designs. Oops. All right, let me grab the designs. All right, hold on. All right, let me see if we got a good view right here. And let's talk about other stuff, right? There's so many variables when we're talking about text, okay? Uh, I used, hold on, let me make sure, because I have two designs. Okay, this is design number one. So the one I'm showing you right now, design number one. And I'm going to show you some changes that I made. Uh, all the all the thread here 
40 weight, okay? You could go 60 weight with the lettering. All right. 60 weight. Uh, hold on. I'm trying to get a good focus. Okay, I think we're good here. All right, this one here, uh, notice that the sand stitch, the yellow sand stitch, the rings, okay, very close to the letters. All right, this is where I kind of had the idea hey, let me open it up a bit. Let me show a little bit more of the blue. Okay. Here, I, I manually cut the jump stitches from word to word. Okay. You could see some of the, like, you'll see little pieces of thread. Like, if you're not careful on your cuts, like, little threads come out. All right. This is super close right here. Right. I, I literally have, I literally have the, the picture right in front of the camera. Okay. Usually you'll be at a distance. You'll be at a at a further distance when you see it on somebody. Okay. If you see it on the left chest logo, it'll okay. But I do bring it up close so you can see okay the little small things that we talked about. All right. Now let me show you the second one that I did. I just opened it up the blue a bit. Okay. Um, let's see. Show this on bam, All right? Super, super subtle change where I show a little bit more of the blue. Okay. Jump stitches, you would have to get very, very close to see the, the jump stitches. All right. But when you see it at a distance, it kind of connects with the lettering. Okay. You could bring the lettering a little bit closer, a little bit wider. All right, but for the most part, okay, it looks clean. Like me looking at it from here, all right, looks very clean, especially the template. I'm definitely going to use this template and then put in my own designs in between, okay? Uh, let's see. And good practice, what I would highly recommend is to do personal projects. Okay, do personal projects so you can see what what settings works for you. Okay, sometimes the settings I use today might be different on a different project. Okay, or on a similar project, I might have to do a little bit of different adjustments. All right. So later today, I'm going to put this on a hat. I'm going to see how it looks on a hat because I see how it is on on twill. Looks pretty good on twill. Okay, but I like to test things on twills and on hats. All right. All right. So I think we're good to go for today. All right. Um, let me just make sure I'm catching up with questions. All right. Cool. Cool. All right. So definitely look out for uh, later. Tomorrow, actually, because uh, tomorrow I'll stitch it on a on a hat. So look out! I'll put up. I'll, I'll post a short video and see how it comes out on a hat. Okay. Uh, here, by doing it on the flat, I can see if I need to make any small tweaks. All right. I, you always learn something when you whenever you do a, a stitch out. You might see. Okay, let me let me make a little hairline change here. Let me make a hairline change there. And then your designs get better and better and better and better. All right. So we'll see how that comes out. Okay. So I do want to thank everybody stopping by today. All right. We are halfway there in the year. Okay. I'm super pumped up for this month. We're going to go all out sampling, testing. Okay. And I'm going to document as much, much, much as possible as I'm working on a lot of these, uh, these sample files. Okay. Uh, I want to thank everybody for stopping by. I want to thank everybody for supporting this channel, especially the first six months. That's been very, very hectic, very crazy for us. But finally, we've settled in. Okay, I finally have some breathing room. And now I could actually create tests and document a lot of this information for everybody here on this channel. All right. So I want to thank everybody for stopping by. I'll see you on the next one. 
Peace out, everybody.